In this video, we're going to review all the videos published in May 2019. Unity ECS tutorials, Marines vs Zombies, Hit Counter, Heart's Health System, and more. Let's begin! So, another month gone, and several more great videos for you to learn from. This month was very exciting to me personally, since I spent a lot of time researching and playing around with ECS and the entire Unity dot stack. I'm really enjoying ECS, and I love the insane performance benefits you can get from it. During my research, I watched pretty much every Unity talk on ECS, and all the comments were asking for tutorials. So I focused on that, and there are 7 videos covering ECS this month. Starting off with the getting started video. This video teaches you how to get started working with ECS from a completely empty scene. It covers the various packages you need, how to install them, and start writing code making entities, then components, and finally systems. After that came the video on getting started with the other essential component of the dot .stack, which is the job system. This is what makes the code run insanely fast. It helps you write clean, safe, multi-threaded code, so all your cores get busy and you can get 10 times speedups. It has certain limitations that you need to be aware of, but performance benefits are certainly worth taking the time to learn. With the basics covered, there was a nice video which is a showcase of what is possible with ECS. A massive battle of marines vs zombies where a handful of marines fight off an endless wave of thousands of zombies. This scene was made with the intent to try to apply everything I've learned on ECS so far and the result is very nice. In the video I cover an overview of all the systems and elements that make it work. So the quadrant system that handles targeting, the mesh based animation system, the AI interactions and so on. I intend to keep expanding upon it and make a proper RTS using this as a base so stay tuned for that. Speaking of various systems, there were a bunch of individual videos on ECS systems. Two videos on finding a target, so we have a bunch of units and a bunch of targets. The units look for the closest target, move towards it and destroy it. First we did it using a simple component system in order to understand the logic of cycling through units and doing logic on them, and then we took that code and jobified it to make it run insanely fast. The end result is thousands of units correctly finding the closest of thousands of targets. This can still be further improved with the help of a quadrant system, which is exactly how the Marines vs Zombies targeting system works. Then there was a very simple video on how to draw a sprite in ECS. Essentially I go over what are the absolute bare bones requirements for drawing a 2D sprite. The video deals with drawing a simple quad with a material using the default render mesh system. And finally related to the job system was a video covering how to get output from a job. This is one of those things that is very simple when you know, but very confusing when you don't know. The job system is wonderful and insanely fast, but also has certain very specific limitations. The main of which being how memory is shared between jobs and the main thread. So in order to do some calculation and get the output, it requires a different type of thinking. There was a video covering level generation for a endless runner. This uses a very simple method, but also very powerful for creating infinite levels with a nice amount of variation. It supports manually making some interesting level parts, and then through code those level parts are automatically instantiated as the player gets closer to the end. The result is infinite levels, with the ability to expand upon with different level themes or increasing difficulty. There was a video covering health bar damage effects. These are great effects that add polish to your game. In the video we covered three different effects, and it's up to you to choose which one best fits your game. There's a fade, shrink, and a cut effect. All are very nice and very easy to implement. Then a really cool video covering the player hit counter. This is the same counter I used in Hyper Knights and one of the best things about that game. It's an extremely satisfying effect with lots of tiny details like increasing size and shake intensity per hit count. It also deals with using a custom font texture to make it look extra cool which was covered in a video in the previous month. A really simple video on handling the logic of a double click to do something, so we go through what a double click really is and how we can identify it. Then once we identify it, we can use it to trigger a special action, so in this case we use a dash towards the mouse position. It's really simple and great for beginners to start to understand how you can make complex behaviors from simple inputs. Another great video on an interesting game system, in this case making a hearts based health system like in The Legend of Zelda. The hearts are split into four segments, and we can easily damage each segment individually. The code is nicely separated into logic and visuals. 
We can easily create objects that deal just one quadrant of damage or destroy a whole heart. Same thing for the healing. Then we also made a very cool healing animation where the hearts get healed over time and have a nice animation when fully healed. There was a video on a simple double jump. This one is a continuation of the simple jump from last month. It starts off from that base and we implement a nice double jump with the option to make it a triple or even more. The code is easy to understand and supports real-time upgrades as well as making it very easy to create a metroidvania style game. Then we also added a nice little orb effect to automatically make the player jump thereby enabling really interesting designs with huge gaps. There was just one quick tip this month, it was covering how to return multiple values from a single function. This can be very useful in certain specific scenarios and the same pattern is used in various unity functions so it helps to understand how it works. Another quick video was regarding how unity deals with photoshop files. In Unity 2019, they hit a function that was previously the default. It's called Remove Matte and automatically handles transparency for PSD files. So in the video, I cover why the sprites have a weird white glow and various fixes including how you can get the option back. And finally, there was a nice video celebrating one year of CodeMonkey. It has been one year since I started this channel and in that time I've made over 200 videos covering all sorts of topics. This has been a great journey so far and I hope you've learned a lot. So many thanks to you for watching the videos. The future looks great with many more topics I have yet to cover including a lot more on ECS since I'm loving how it works. So that was it for the month of May 2019. I hope you found the videos helpful and learned something along the way. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.